Ahoy, this is Denka. How to edit an Insta360 app. Let's go through all editing options, explain all icons and tools. This is in-depth tutorial. Timestamps are enabled so you can find the sections you need more easily. I have many clips here from the Caribbean that I filmed with Insta360 X5. Let me open one of them. To make things simple, I will only mention three tools on this default page. At the top is the aspect ratio, so you can select a vertical or horizontal video. For those who prefer Dolby Vision, you can enable it on the left with this icon. Below Dolby Vision is another important icon, and that is Dwarp. When you enable that, it will remove the distortion. The reason I'm not explaining the rest of the tools on this default page is that some of them will actually take you to editor. That is one of the three editing modes here at the bottom. First one is quick, which is simple. Editor is next, where you have full control over everything. And the last one is AI edit. That is done pretty much automatically to get the pace, but then you can still change everything on your own. Let's start with quick editing mode. Before I hit quick edit, I will select 16 by 9 aspect ratio as I want the video to be horizontal and I will also enable dwarp. Let's hit quick. Here you can record a single clip from the footage. By default, it is set to manual, which means that all you have to do is move the smartphone around to select the framing. Once you select where you want to start, just hit the start recording and keep moving around to what you want to capture. Once you are done, hit stop, and now you can export a clip to your smartphone. Besides recording a video, you can take a frame out of the video and save it as a snapshot. There are two more things you can do here. If you hit the zoom icon, you can select field of view. You've got here tiny planet, mega view, linear, and narrow. You can also move left and right to select custom field of view. Besides manual editing, you can also enable tracking. You can do just object tracking. You just drag the box or reposition to select the object you want to track. Selfie mode allows you to record yourself and here you can also enable tracking. Forward view will maintain the same forward view. 360 will spin the camera around. 180 view to the right is next. 180 view to the left and lastly, tiny planet that is also animated. It will start from current view to tiny planet and back. So this is quick editing mode. If you are finding this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing as it really helps channel growth and me being able to create more tutorials just like these. The next mode I'm going to explain is the editor mode. Let's select another clip and hit editor. Once you go through this mode, you can change aspect ratio right here and you can enable or disable dwarp. In the middle, you have 360 view so you can just drag with the finger on the screen to select the view you need. Selfie view is next. Forward view. And the last icon will give you choice of recomposed shot and alternative. In alternative, you cannot select zoom or field of view. It will be done automatically. Zoom will work in 360. Selfie and front view. The slider is the same as in quick mode. You can select custom zoom or any of these presets. Let's go to the lower screen. Right beside video clip, you have also an option to enable highlights. When you enable highlights, the AI will automatically pull out interesting clips from the footage and animate that as well. As you can see, the clips are also organized to categories. Let's hit the video clip so I can explain the next three control below that are record, frame cut, and deep track. The first record is the same as I explained in quick mode. You just move the smartphone around to record the clip. Once you stop recording, the portion of the clip will be red and now it takes you to frame cut. If you want to redo it, you can. You will see delete once you click the area and start again. 
Once you hit frame cut, it will let you either cancel selection or drag timeline to add more to it or trim to the end. You can also cancel it if you just tap on the highlighted area. Once you confirm the clip, it will be in edit and export section that I will show you shortly. And if you still change your mind, you can hit cancel the clip. So that was explained, record and frame cut. The last option here is deep track. Once you select the object you want to track and record the clip, once again, frame cut will show up and you can confirm the clip so it shows in the edit and export page. Now it's time to go to the edit and export. This section offers simplified editing right here. This is for faster editing. Another option would be hitting the go to more edits where you have many more tools. Let's stay here first. Here you can change aspect ratio. You can change the order of the clips by dragging them. You can add more videos from the library. When you tap and hold the clip, you can trim the clip. You can also add a movement. You can adjust volume and also delete the clip. You can add transitions between the clips if you tap on this white icon. The same transition can be also applied to all. The whole timeline can be muted with this icon on the left. The controls below lets you add music to your timeline. You can choose from the Insta360 library. You can also add music from any of the videos in your phone's library. It will extract the music and add it to the app. You can slow down and speed up selected clip. You also have the option to apply this feature to all the clips. Color is a big section. Here you can enable Color Plus and adjust the strength of the effect. Filter is next. You can apply any of these and again select the strength. Adjust has all the controls you need to get the final look you want. All the tools are right here. You can play with exposure, highlight, shadow, contrast, brightness, black point, saturation, vibrance, temperature, and tint. The last page takes you to Aquavision 2.0 controls if you need to enable it. Let's go back and select stats. Here is where you can enable data source such as fitness app or GPS data. Snapshot lets you select any of the frames from the video and save it as a photo. Here you can also save live snapshot and 360 photo. Once you are done editing, you can export your video right here. Let's go to complex editing timeline with more tools. Let's hit go to more edits. You can mute the timeline. You can add more clips and add music. Let's go through the icons at the bottom. Most of the tools I already explained throughout this video as they are the same, so I'm going to point out the tools that are specifically here. Let's hit 360 reframe. There are two tools I'm going to point out. Keyframes are first. What are keyframes for? I'm going to drag to select the starting point of view and hit keyframe. Now I see it on a timeline. I can still do lots more here. I can zoom in or out. I can also adjust horizontal level. I'm going to drag the timeline a bit further and add another keyframe. And let's just adjust the zoom. Now when I play between those two keyframes, I see the zoom effect I created. You can also reframe the shot, make a movement in any direction. You can do pretty much anything with keyframes. The second tool that I want to mention is multi view. Once you hit that, you can add picture and picture. The main frame has forward view and selfie view is here. The next one is dual screen where it is divided in half. And the last one is car multi view. Let's go to the next edit tool. Here are several tools to mention. Under speed tool, you can speed up or slow down the entire clip, or you can create a speed ramp effect by choosing only part or segment of the clip. Let's hit the segment. If you hit plus, you can highlight the portion of the clip that you can speed up or slow down. 
Motion ND lets you add motion blur without the need of using ND filters. Once you enable that, you can control spread and intensity with those sliders right here. Face filter is here for those who like to use that feature. Another important feature when it comes to privacy is ability to blur out license plate. The tool is simply called Plate Blur. Copy will simply copy the selected clip and if you hit replace on selected clip, you can use it exactly as it says, replacing the clip with one of the clips in your album. Let's go back and hit text stickers. Besides adding text and stickers, you can explore template section in the middle that has already pre-designed animated styles. It is worth checking out. There are lots of there. Let's go back and explore effects. Don't miss those as they can also visually enhance your videos. Let's leave all this complex editing and go to a very basic page to explain the last editing mode, that is AI Edit. This is the easiest editing as this app will analyze the clip for you and pick what views look the best. It will automatically select one of the templates and edit it together with music. You can change the template if you like and even hit edit to completely change it around. You will get access to all editing tools I explained throughout the video. Let's talk about exporting video. You can export to your phone regular video or save 360 degrees video. By default, the video is being saved in 1080p resolution and 30 frames per second frame rate. You can change all these parameters based on the platform you will be posting the video on, and you can also choose your own custom parameters. If you want to disable watermark, the setting is right here. So this was a basic editing walkthrough in the Insta360 app. Give it a thumbs up if you found this helpful. Don't forget to subscribe for more, and I will see you in one of those videos next. Ciao, ahoy.